Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. Today, Lenovo is announcing their new gaming laptops. The Legion 7 will replace the Y740, and the Legion 5 and the Legion 5i will replace the Y540. Now, the I after the 5 denotes that it's an Intel CPU, and if there's no I, that is an AMD 4000 CPU. The IdeaPad Gaming 3 15 inch will replace the L340 as the budget gaming laptop. I'm currently testing the L340 now, so make sure to subscribe to catch that video and to make sure you don't miss out on the new laptops. Review units will should be available end of April, early May. The launch date on these new laptops will be May 2020, so let's go over the pricing and specifications, followed by a more detailed look at each one. The premium offering will be the Legion 7 with a starting price of $1,600, whilst the Legion 5i 15-inch using the 10th gen Intel will start at $830 and its AMD counterpart will start at $850. So that is good to see. The 17-inch version is just available with an Intel CPU and that will start at $1,130. Now for those looking for an even cheaper system, the IdeaPad Gaming 3 starts at $730. So, starting with the Legion 7, it will be available with up to an Intel 10th Gen i9 CPU and up to an RTX 2080 Max-Q Super, so it's going to be plenty powerful. They said it maxes out at 32GB of RAM, but they are checking to see if it is possible to add two 32GB DIMMs, but it definitely will be running dual channel. Storage will be up to 1TB NVMe SSD, now there's no mention of 2.5 inch drive bay as there was on the Y740. I suspect that has been dropped in favour of the larger 80 watt hour battery that promises about 8 hours of runtime. On the left hand side you get a Thunderbolt 3 port, USB-C and a combo headphone mic jack. And on the right there will be a single USB 3.1 type A port and on the back you will have an HDMI 2.0, two more USB 3.1 type A ports an Ethernet jack and a rectangular power brick port. Like the Y740, these rear ports will be lit up so you can easily see what they are from above. Good news too about the power brick. The current model had a really large power brick so thankfully these ones will be 30% slimmer, making the system much more portable, especially with the weight starting at 2.1 kilograms or 4.6 pounds. So we get a 33% larger battery that can also charge up to 50% within 30 minutes via Rapid Charge Pro. Plus we still get G-Sync, but this time we have NVIDIA's advanced Optimus technology, so there's no more needing to manually switch to and from hybrid graphics and then rebooting. The webcam is still 720p, but this time it has been moved to the top and it has a privacy shutter. Now audio was good uh, this generation, so I expect that the dual 2 watt Dolby Atmos speakers will also be great. An iron grey anodized aluminium is used for construction and it is just under 20mm thick. Lenovo continue to use the Corsair IQ software for their keyboard lighting, the logo on the lid and this time also lighting at the front. The True Strike keys will have soft landing switches and 1.3mm of travel, which will give better tactile feedback. Now one huge improvement is the emission of the macro keys on the left that you saw on the Y740. That caused the keyboard to be moved to the right, which people generally didn't like. So now the glass Windows Precision trackpad, which by the way is now 39% larger, is located centrally below the keyboard. They also use larger arrow keys, and above the number pad is a row of dedicated media keys, which is useful. All in all, I think this is a much better layout. There will be two IPS panel options, a 240Hz and a 144Hz. Now both are Visa HDR400, 100% of sRGB and up to 500 nits of brightness. Compared to the outgoing Y740, it will have 40% shorter grey to grey response time at under 1 millisecond using overdrive and will be X-Rite Pantone colour calibrated with a narrow bezel design. The Legion 7 is expected to have very good thermals as well, using vapour chamber cooling technology and dual liquid crystal polymer fans that move more air than the previous model. Lenovo still allows the FN and Q key combination to select fan profiles and they have adopted a thermal sensor array at key points in the chassis to even out any hotspots. I'm really looking forward to the Legion 7, it looks classy and I like how they have rectified the keyboard position and made the power brick smaller. Wi-Fi 6 is standard now in all of their gaming laptops, and the big plus is having vapor chamber cooling. 
Let's look at the Legion 5i that replaces the Wi-Fi 40. CPU-wise, this will be offered with an Intel 10th Gen i5 and an i7. Now, there was no mention if this will include the 8-core i7, but I suspect it will because they will also offer the 8-core Ryzen uh, 4800H in the Legion 5, you know, the non-i model. Graphics will max out at the RTX 2060. There was no mention if this will be the new 115-watt part, but I suspect it will be the regular 90-watt one. Memory options include 8GB and 16GB. Now, this is a little bit worrying, as the base model may just ship with single-channel memory. Like the Legion 7, it will ship with up to 1TB of NVMe storage, but if you opt for the 80Wh battery, then you will get no 2.5-inch bay. If you opt for the 60Wh battery option, then you do get that extra storage option. One big change is that although it is still made out of plastic, gone is that rough pattern that was on the lid previously, and now it is more of a smooth finish, and this should make it much easier to keep clean. The default is black, but there will also be a new Hunter Green option available too. Now the logo doesn't light up, but it is reflective. On the left is an always powered on USB 3.1 Type-A port, a combo headphone mic jack, and on the right there is a single USB 3.1 Type-A, and around the back you get two more USB 3.1 Type-A's, one USB-C, HDMI 2.0, Ethernet, and the power port. This time, unlike the Wi-Fi 40, these ports will be lit up, so you can see what they are from above. So no Thunderbolt 3 on the Legion 5i. It is a bit thicker and heavier than the Legion 7 as well, at 1 inch thick and 5.5 pounds or 2.53 kilos. The default keyboard will be backlit white only, but Lenovo will offer an optional 4 zone RGB configuration. There are three panel options available. The base will be a 60 Hz, which won't have G Sync, but at least it will have 100% of sRGB and be 300 nits of brightness. Now, the faster 144 Hz and 240 Hz options will both have G-Sync and make use of the new advanced NVIDIA Optimus. The 144Hz will have a brightness of 300 nits and the 240Hz will be brighter at up to 500 nits for the same fast 1 millisecond response time. Like the Legion 7, it will have true strike keys with their soft landing switches, but a larger 1.5mm of travel and the rest of the layout will be the same as the Legion 7. The speakers and webcam will also be the same as the Legion 7. The 17 inch version will have the 80 watt hour battery. It will be available in the black smooth plastic and will either have a 60 Hz or 144 Hz 300 nit panel. There's no mention of G Sync though. For the AMD version, Lenovo will offer the Ryzen 5 4 600H, which is a 6 core or an 8 core 4800H. But here is the kicker the GPU options are only the GTX 1650 or the new 1650 Ti. There's no 1660 Ti or RTX 2060 here. Now what a shame, I think this may well kill this model unless you want it mainly for content creation or productivity work. You also have the 60 watt hour battery as an option, but have the same white backlit keyboard with an optional 4 zone RGB configuration. Now finally we have the entry level IdeaPad Gaming 3. This will go up to an Intel 10th gen i7, probably the 6 core, but that is okay for me. Like the L340, it will only have 8GB of RAM in single channel, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Seriously, it is a waste of time having only single channel. Here's a chart showing what my L340 is like in Battlefield 5 with single channel. Uh, performance is way down and you get no scaling at all when you lower quality settings. For graphics, you get up to the GTX 1650 and 512GB of NVMe storage. You will have two panel options, a 60Hz and a 120Hz. Now both are at a low 250 nit brightness. The 60Hz one will have something like 95% of sRGB, but the 120Hz one will likely be around about 65% of sRGB. But at least it's nice now to have an optional faster screen for the gamers. The webcam will be located up top and it too will have a privacy shutter. There will be actually two color options, both made out of plastic. The default is black and there will be an optional blue. The side bezels have been made slimmer to increase the screen to body ratio to 90% and the keyboard has also been improved over the L340, using the same DNA from other ThinkPad and Lenovo models. You get larger arrow keys, a full size number pad with media keys. Now key travel is 1.5mm and you get a 30% larger one piece plastic windows position trackpad. The key lighting will still be blue. Inside there will be an extra heat pipe for the GPU and you will have dual vents for better airflow.
Now at 4.85 pounds or 2.2 kilos, it is pretty portable. Not sure what the battery size is, the L340 has a 45 watt hour battery and that got me 5 hours 45 minutes of runtime. Lenovo are saying the Idea Pad Gaming 3 will last about 8 hours, so I suspect perhaps you'll get the 60 watt hour battery here. So we do get some nice improvements with the faster CPU and the new 1650 Ti, you get a better keyboard and a faster screen option, but unfortunately it will be hobbled with a single channel memory. So that's it, let me know in the comments below which one you would like me to review, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, bye now.